Welcome back to Module 1, to the second demo where we're going to be exploring the optical color block. And I want to talk first uh, about how we're going to approach that and just remind you that you can use the exact same thumbnail that you used for the local color block. Keep in mind that the color block is very, very loose and you're working on simply blocking in the uh, basic colors that go into those five to seven shapes you identified in your thumbnail. So we are going to dive right on in in just a second. But remember, we're looking at observed optical color rather than the local color. So we're going to mix the colors now for our more observed optical color painting. And I have put the colors I'm going to use right underneath the ones that I used in local color so that you can see the difference. Now for the red, we're going to start with that naphthol red, the cadmium red hue. And then for the dark, I'm going to add a little bit of ultramarine blue to it because you remember from our color wheel studies back in CCL, ultramarine blue is going to turn that a little purple. So it will darken it, but it will also make it a little more of a purpley red. And because that is the orangey red that I'm mixing it into, it's going to be a slightly duller purple. It's not going to be an intense, lush purple. It's going to be more of a slightly dulled, browny purple. Just what we need for the shadow there. So there we have our browny purple. Let's look at it next to the one mixed with black, and it's a much richer color. So already we're starting to intensify and enrich the color that we're using. So for the lightest color in the red, we're going to add yellow. Now this is Indian yellow and white. I've already mixed that together to make an almost pure yellow. So we're going to take that yellow and we're going to add the red to it. Because remember you want to add the darker color into the lighter one. So this is going to end up being our lightest value. And I may have to get myself out a little bit more yellow. That may be a little too dark. To do that in a hurry, I grabbed the permanent yellow light, which is the same sort of pure yellow that you get when you mix the Indian yellow and white. Almost exactly the same hue. So there's our light value. A lot more intense than the pink from the local color. So it will have a stronger sense of illumination. For our middle value for the cup, it's going to be a slightly dulled blue. And remember that blue, ultramarine blue, phthalo blue in particular, but ultramarine blue as well, those are dye colors. So to make them look more intense, you actually have to add a tiny little bit of white. So we're going to have to add a teeny little bit of white to that to really make it look intense. So those dye colors take a little bit of white. 
And so we're mixing a slightly dulled blue. Because when you look closely at that cup, the darker values on the cup are a slightly bluish purple. So there we have our dark value for the cup. Now we're going to the background. And instead of using any black at all, we are going to make a dark from our naphthol red and our ultramarine blue. When you look at that background, it is actually a little warmer towards the base and a little cooler towards the top. So I wanted to mix a purple that was a little bit warmer, almost the same color that we've got for the shadow, which is then going to show us that that shadow, remember blue is a dye color, I'm going to have to add a little bit of white to the shadow for the base to bring the value up to where it's supposed to be and to intensify it just a tiny little bit. So I take a tiny little bit of white bring that up a little bit. That's the beauty of mixing your colors ahead is you can make those adjustments so that there's a distinct difference in value and in intensity in those colors that you're working with. Super important to be able to get that ahead of time and be able to compare. It saves you so much time later. Okay, for this background, at the top, it got really cool. So it's not going to take as much red as the one at the base. It's much more blue. Not a huge difference, but just a little bit. Give me a subtle difference. And then we'll still have a light color for the top of the cup. But you might have noticed when you looked at the cup in the photograph that the lid does not, I mean the top of it, which is really the bottom, um, does not really look white. It looks faintly blue. So I'm going to take a tiny little bit of that blue and add it into my white so that it is not pure white anymore. down here. Okay, so we have that light blue which still looks a little bit too cool. So I am going to stick a little very tiny, tiny amount of yellow in there to warm it up just a little bit. And make it a little bit more of a yellow green for that top. So we are ready to go now. We have our colors mixed. We have our red, we have our light red, we have our dark red, we have the medium color for the cup for the back, and we have a color for the lid. Then we have colors for the background. So we have our colors mixed and ready to go. So let's, just as we did last time, start with that cup that back shape of the cup. So we're just going to block that in quickly. Remember I said we are not worrying about drawing issues here or perfection. We are simply blocking in, doing a color block, 
and we're not planning on framing it. So we're not going to get caught up in whether it's perfection or not. So then get that other side. Load up some more paint. I am hoping that y'all could see in that photograph just how blue the back of that cup where it is in shadow is. That it is not gray. It is not white. It is actually a blue. So you don't want to paint it with grays that are going to look a little odd and not nearly as lush as a more observed color, what we actually see instead of what we know. So hopefully you have used that spot color checker that I've talked about in the concept video. And to make your own, all you need to do is take a piece of cardstock stick a hole punch on it and go as high up on that cardstock as you can so that you can get a hole in it. Look through that hole to identify the value and the color of the thing that you're looking at. Bottom is going to be a little bit more so work out that tilt. Try not to have to turn the board. So it makes it hard for y'all to see. Now, this side is a little wonky. So to fix that, I just scrape back a little bit. And scrape a tiny little bit more so that that angle is a little bit more correct. And that part that I've scraped back doesn't have to be scraped back to pure white. That tiny little bit I did there is going to be enough. If you want, you can take your small knife and adjust that bottom edge. If you feel like something's off a little bit, you can just take that. But don't get any more precise with it than I am right here. And there we have the base, uh, the back of the cup. Then I'm going to, just as we did before, block in the shadows that are on the floor of my little still life booth. So the shadows were this dark purple. And... They go roughly from about here over. So we have a nice sort of slightly dulled purple for the shadow there. 
Remember this is sort of a butterfly shape. So I need to get some more paint on there so I can get right up to this edge that I said was a little wonky. Do a little correction on that edge. Again, that's the nice thing about working with a knife. You can make that little quick correction. You do the same thing with a brush. You just need to remember to scrape it back, scrape that with a knife, and then you can do that. So then this is going to be spread out more in a shape like that. butterfly of shadow that comes out away from the cup. So now we're going to get the darker red value that goes on the other side. back edge there. Steal a little of this from over here. And we've got that almost blocked in. And it comes down just a little bit here. And comes around, as you remember, Just a hair to the front. There we have our darker value. And I'm going to wipe the knife and move to our red. Which comes right up. up around that butterfly shape. I've got a little bit of mush in there. So if you get the mush going, remember, scrape back. So right now we're trying not to blend a whole lot of colors. So not worried about perfection, but I just don't want a whole lot of blending going on. With a lot of little funky color marks in there. So once I 
have it on there, I can go back and cover up some of the darker stuff that's showing through. And take this up to the base of our cup. And remember, if you apply too much pressure, you're going to scrape what's underneath and it'll pull up. So lay the knife almost flat and apply the paint like it's icing. Yes, you're going to use paint up, but that's what the paint's there for. Work on a smaller surface if you're worried about using too much paint. I wouldn't go smaller than like an 8x10 or maybe a 6x8. But absolutely work a little bit smaller if the amount of paint you're using gives you the willies. A little bit more of that paint up here. That's the pure red. So I'm going to bring that over here. A little bit more red. And as you're painting, it's always a good idea to change direction often. So change the direction of your marks so that there's a little bit of variety to what you're doing. As I said, this is an exercise, but what a great time to practice that. So lay a mark, pull the other way. Lay a mark, and then pull the other way. Again, it doesn't matter which medium you're working with works the exact same way in that you are dealing with colors we're not talking about medium specific issues then we have our lighter color that goes in here towards the bottom Bring this up a little bit. And over a hair right here as well. And 
Now for the background, don't forget to change, also, side issue, don't forget to change paper towels often because if you keep wiping with the same paper towel, you are going to begin to apply paint instead of wiping it off the knife. So make sure you keep changing that out. Now for the background, that far distant wall of my little viewing thing, still life chamber, we have a different purple than what we have in the shadow. It is more blue than it is red. But it's still a reddish purple. But you can see when it's up next to that base color how much more purple it is. Bring that up a little bit. And I have the same thing on the other side. the dark purpley blue that's right in And just like before, I'm going to bring the paint right up around that back. you twist and turn the knife, you'll have more control over making that curve. Same thing with the brush. You want to twist. Don't hold it in a static way there. So there is our slightly warmer purple, and now we will get our slightly cooler purple up here at the top. So we're going to wrap up with that slightly cooler purple at the top. Last, I'm going to go back and finesse the that very top part of the cup. 
also known as the bottom. Okay, because I want to clean up the angle on that lid, on the, the top of the cup, it's a little bit too much. There we go. So after doing that and making all those little icky mar little marks, you need to go back and get rid of some of those. I want to just leave them on there. So we blend those away. So there we have the background, all we have left. Are the I want to do a little adjustment on the bottom of the cup on that other side. I told y'all not to be perfectionists, but then I'm going to be one. That angle was just bothering me just a little too much. There. Okay, so do as I say, do not as I do. Then you're going to get your smaller knife out. And we're going to put that light greeny blue up here at the top. Now I am going to have to flip this around just a little bit. So, get that last little bit of the lid in, and remember we're, we can leave a little white space if we need to, because this is a block in. If you were going to be finishing this painting off and adding more details, those little white lines would disappear during the course of the painting. So, I am getting that much paint on there at a time. And I am going to go on and get close to those little edges. But I'm not trying to get all the way up to them. Once you get through that first initial block in, when you're working on a larger painting where you're going into more detail, you can come back in later and work on those points that you need to. So then I'm going to get this last little bit here, here, and here. And there we have it. Our first optical, more observed color painting. So we have our cup and we have it with a color block in that is using more observed optical color and in just a second you're going to see a comparison of the two and you'll notice how much more vibrant this is just with the few colors that are on the palette right now. So using more observed color, optical color will greatly enhance your paintings, both in their vibrancy and in the, the sense of light and illumination. So, happy painting!